I was told that you said that you could lose the 30 top advertisers or big breeders from Morph Market, and that would be fine. What's the context of that? Technically, that's true. I don't remember the exact conversation, but it was something, it was on Facebook, and it was something to do with, you know, bigger breeders. You know, people were people were saying, oh, these big guys are never going to be kicked off a of Morph Market because they have all this control because they're paying Morph Market a lot of money. And so even though Darian now owns Morph Market, you know, he's not going to actually do anything. I replied with basically the top 20 or 30 breeders on Morph Market are only paying around $800 a year each. Um, that That's not a huge amount of money, you know, like considering the platform, you know, I can, whether I remove you know, one or two of the biggest people on there, that's, you know, $800, $1,600 a year. That's that's not like a, any kind of make or break. You know, there's zero. Uh, not only am I not doing this for the money, that's literally not the purpose for any of this. I just, I don't really care about that. Um, but, you know, the, the comment was taken completely out of context because I was simply explaining that, hey, that is not the case. And that, if you are one of the top breeders and you're doing things really shady, you know, there's something very questionable going on and we find out about it, then obviously we're going to potentially do something about it. And I'm not saying anybody is, um, but there have been some sellers that, you know, have done some things that have warranted a suspension or, um, you know, even a ban. Uh, but we've technically, we've only banned about 0.3% of the 5,000 sellers on the platform. So, you know, people like to take a lot of this stuff out of context though. I will say, you know, I'm not necessarily the best uh, PR person, you know, but I'm not going to hire somebody just to talk for me because uh, to me, that's just fake. You know, like I'm, I'm honest and transparent about everything and there's nothing that I am, you know, hiding. Uh, you know, I'm not, funded by you know PETA or something and you know, i know there's been some rumors of that yeah. just outrageous stuff has been said i mean it's just crazy to think that like okay yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna go ahead and just remove completely remove the top sellers just to push these smaller guys was kevin specifically bullying you because he's a piece it, of it was kevin <laughs> you know that this whole thing's a setup so the uh the funny thing about that is it was actually satire so it was a completely fake story and post and what happened was when i took morph market over i immediately i just got right into it and i was like all right i'm gonna make all these changes i was hungry to you know just fix things and change things and a lot of people started getting upset about it and they were like oh i don't want this i don't want that you know blah 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 and they started you know just it was kind of like an, an immediate negative thing you know i'm trying to like make some changes make improvements and people were just kind of shooting me down so what happened was I was like, all right, you know, some of these ball python breeders are like, you know, getting under my skin a little bit. I'm going to just mess with them. Uh, they started talking crap on Morph Market and they're like, well, reptile expos are, are better. You know, like I do better at reptile expos. I don't need Morph Market. You know, I don't need that anymore. So then I go and I post uh, Morph Market's just like a reptile expo, but you can skip the ball python tables. And it was just a joke and it wasn't, you know, it, anybody who knows me, like knows that I wasn't being like mean about it. Like I have, I have like 500 ball pythons myself. So some of these guys got on a podcast and they started talking about how hateful I was and how mean I was to ball python breeders and that I must've been bullied as a kid and I must've been picked on and who wronged me, you know, somebody must've wronged me. That is what is rubbing me the wrong way. As I went through the comments, there is definitely intent. I almost get the sense of a personality of a person that got picked on when they were a kid. They were bullied, and this this is how they're getting back at, at, at the bullies that made them suffer during their childhood. That That's what it seems like. So then I'm sitting there, and I'm just thinking, I'm like, I'm just going to troll the shit out of these guys. So then I decided to make a post, and I'm like, I wanted to apologize to everyone for... The way that I did things and as as a kid you know I started breeding ball pythons and everyone you know I try I worked so hard I educated myself on them and I learned everything I could 
And then I went to a reptile expo. I started to sell my Ultramels. That's an inside joke, by the way. Uh, I tried to sell my Ultramels, and ev- all these ball python breeders just made fun of me and told me that they didn't like me. So I got out of ball pythons, and I was at a low point in my life, and I got into cockroaches, and I made my money with cockroaches, and I saved up enough to buy Morph Market and get back at these ball python breeders. Nice. And if you read the story, like if you read the post... <laughs> You can kind of tell that it was very, you know, fake. I had told Donnie I was going to talk to you, and Donnie was a little skeptical because I don't know you at all. Yeah. But with that being said, you don't know us. You contacted Donnie, and without my knowledge, uh, Donnie decided to to rest your fears that you need to see the facility. And Donnie, you want to explain that quick? I kind of pressured, you know, I was like, no, okay, no, you, hey, it's uh, fine. It's you know, good. Hold on, hold I just want to see what you guys do. And he's, you know, he just, all right, here you go. And Facebook, you know, uh, vi- live video and showed me around and went through like every single room. And, you know, like there were certain areas that were a little bit messy with things that were going on or being worked on. And, you know, but I, I saw nothing that was like bad or anything that was, you know, questionable. You know, I was like, oh, it all looks fine to me. And I believe what people are saying to you is they said something along the lines of we're ju- people. I don't I'm sure somebody you trusted said we're just as bad as Samson. So that like scared the shit out of me because I was like, I can't have Darian thinking this. So, yeah, I did. I jumped and I was like, I'll go live with you right now, dude. And we'll show you the whole building. Two minutes. I think it took me to get on Facebook live and that would have been no time to clean anything ahead of time. And I just started walking around the building. Yeah, yeah. I thought everything looked great. Honestly, I can't think of a better time to bring this up. So let's talk about Slither Inc. And how some of you people are incredibly misinformed about what we do at Nerd. Last year while I was attending Animal Con with Kevin, I started getting videos sent to me from the Slither Inc. facility. I'm fairly certain this video was taken in 2022, and it's actually unclear if this is his old facility or his new facility. I guess it really doesn't even matter. So it's incredibly insulting that anyone would ever try to tarnish our brand by comparing our facility to theirs. So I would strongly recommend that you guys do your research before you start popping off. And unlike most facilities, we're open to the public. So you can book a tour tomorrow. I feel like I have always been on the kind of animal welfare side of things to an extent. Like I've been fairly outspoken about that over the years. And running, you know, Dubia, um, you know, I've I've been outspoken about that. And a lot of people you know, I've really liked that. And I, I think that that is an important thing, but I also think that people take that stuff too far. You guys have the most animals on Morph Market. And yet the amount of issues that we see, the percentage is so small that I cannot sit here with confidence, say that you guys are doing anything wrong or bad or anything like that, because percentage wise, which is all that matters, you guys are doing a good job. The problem is, is that people, people come out and they pick up their pitchforks and they're ready to go because they saw that somebody had a bad experience. And, you know, there's just so much more to it. You know, it happened with, you know, Brian Barcheck. I made a post. Our Facebook got shut down. Our Facebook account, our Instagram account, both got shut down. We got our Instagram back. Our Facebook was still down. I reached out to Brian and he said, hey, man, like, let me send this to all my guys. I looked, it was back up and I made a post and I said, well, we finally got our Facebook back up. Thanks to Brian Barcheck for taking the time out of his day while he's battling cancer. And then people get on there and they just uh, were talking highly of me and like the way that I was doing things. They immediately turn on me and they say, well, never using Dubia, never using Morph Market again. You know, F you guys, blah, 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 blocking you. And there was... <sighs> 200, 300 people doing that. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, what is wrong with society and with what, like, what is wrong with people? And unfortunately, when you have people that are uh, uh, looking at their Facebook feeds, it's usually coming from Facebook and they're like, oh, this, this is in my feed. This is relevant. This is important. It's because we, negativity gets attention. That's just the way it is. Do you have bots that are slow rolling my ads, but Johnny's leopard geckos or fast pace. Tell me about those bots. I mean, you know, I've seen more small breeders that have complained about lack of sales lately. So I'm pretty sure I'm not doing that. But uh, previously, before I took Morph Market over, uh, if you as a seller, all of a sudden you had a hundred ads that you wanted to list all at one time, right? You would go and you would 
do a bulk, you know, upload and you'd upload a hundred animals. And then the first hundred, the next hundred animals on the page are all one seller. So as a, as a person, you know, browsing the site, you're just going to scroll through like four pages that are going to be one seller. And that looks crappy from our point of view. Yeah. The buyer doesn't want to see that. So what we do is we give them a couple minute delay. So like if you go and you, you know, bulk upload a hundred ads, some of them might be delayed for a little while, but that's because we want every, you know, other ad to kind of be randomized a little bit. You know, there's like 60 something thousand animals on Morph Market right now. And those animals, they're getting renewed every, you know, on average, like 25 days. So in tw after 25 days, if you still have an animal available, your ad gets renewed. And what used to happen was that it was renewed at like three, four, five o'clock in the morning. So now let's say that you are a random seller that went and uploaded an animal at midnight. Well, now 2,500 ads or just the, let's say ball pythons, 1,100 ball pythons are renewed every single day or 1,200 somewhere around there. So around 1,200 ball pythons are renewed every morning at you know 4 a.m. Well, now you put your animal up, your ball python up at midnight. That is never going to be seen because all they're going to see is the ones that were from 25 days ago that just got renewed. So the next day, that's all they're going to see. And they're going to have to go through 1,200 listings to see that. So what I did was we we made a change where they get they get renewed at the time that they were listed approximately, uh, you know, 25 days before. So now it's all pretty, you know, randomized and then also, you know, staggered out on the bulk upload side. So overall, it makes the platform so much better, so much more usable and so much more friendly for people. And that is part of what I'm trying to do is making improvements like that that are going to basically just make the platform more usable and better for everybody so that nobody gets pushed down and nobody gets prioritized. You know, there's no prioritization at all. We also just added the local section, which is an easy way for people to, you know, see animals nearby. So it'll take like, you know, within 50 miles of you and it will find, and it will, you know, give you animals that are nearby, which is awesome, especially for any uh, breeder that also has a pet store or, or a retail, you know, front. Yeah. Um, but then on top of that, we just added a way for, for you to see like, uh, the most popular, um, animals of the day. Now you can like heart react to, you know, different things. So basically any animal that is, you know, liked the most over a few days, you know, a couple days, uh, you can just go sort by popularity. And now it's really cool. Cause you could see what people are most interested in. And that's a, that's an amazing thing for buyers and for sellers, because as a seller, you can go on there and you can see, oh man, what is up with all these blah, 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 you know, like uh, this species and this, you know, uh, trait, like why is, why is there like five of those on the first two pages? Are you PETA, you bastard? Not at all. I guess animal welfare is what I, how I would put it. I am very, uh, you know, politically and all that. I'm very, you know, green party and environmentalism and, uh, you know, animal activism you know like i am i am just like i'm all about nature and the animals and that's you know that's what i care about you know it's like okay this is something that i care about um but i am reasonable about it and i am you know if people own animals we are responsible for them they don't have any in the wild they can do whatever the hell they want to do when they're in captivity and they're in a box in your house and you let, you know, you, you should probably, if you have them as a pet, you should probably let them out, you know, frequently and kind of do their thing. If that's what they want to do, if they're wanting to get out, you know, they completely rely on you. So if, if they don't have access to food and water or proper, uh, you know, temperature gradients and, you know, whatever else, they're not going to thrive and that is 100 percent on the owner of that animal so you are you are a supporter of us arc absolutely i needed to hear that i needed to actually know that absolutely i i think um a few years ago i was actually one of the naysayers i i wasn't really against us arc in any way but i i'm a very i question everything that, that's how i've been since i was a kid you know that's you know, even my parents, you know, said that about just about everything. They're like, yeah, you just, you know, you'd question every single thing that happened, no matter what it was, you know, and, and that's something that I've just always done with us arc, you know, a few years ago, I started to kind of dig into things a little bit, but as I educated myself on it and spoke with, 
Phil Goss and a few others, uh, I realized that U.S. ARC is the only thing we have. There's literally nothing, there's no other organization that is fighting for, you know, the right to keep anim- uh, reptiles. Um, there, there's really nothing else out there. So the people who are against U.S. ARC and saying, oh, they're just making all this money and blah, blah, blah. Look at the numbers because U.S. ARC publishes this data. They have the numbers on their website. That's what I looked into. It takes millions of dollars just to buy a politician or whatever, you know, whatever you want to call that. Um, And even where U.S. ARC is right now, if the government decides to step in and make some very large, you know, blanket laws on the entire industry, we're screwed. I mean, there's nothing that we're going to be able to do to get out of that. As I understand, you think not a lot of people should or are prepared to keep reticulated pythons. Is that also inclusive of Burmese pythons, African rock pythons, amethystine pythons, Papuan olive pythons, anacondas? Does that include all of those? As a retic owner myself, I don't have an issue with reticulated pythons or berms. Uh, we also have, I believe we have an African rock python. Uh, we have a couple anacondas. Um, several retics and in fact one of our largest retics around 19 feet so having experience with that we don't sell them in our store that's that's one example i i choose not to sell them if we have a customer who's really set on buying a reticulated python and they ask about it uh we have actually you know we have sold them you know we've got 300 million people you know 328 million people in the u.s and I would say that, you know, maybe 1% of those people, you know, if that are equipped or experienced, you know, or even able to handle something like that, you know, probably 0.1%, honestly. And, you know, that's, that's really what it comes down to for me. I'm not going to say, oh, you know, I don't think anybody should own any of this stuff and we should just ban it, get rid of it, you know, all that. It's a really, it's a really tough, tough thing to discuss and i am generally in more of the party of like you know we shouldn't ban something but we should probably be more responsible with it and maybe even you know whether it's with government or something you know i don't really want the government to get involved in stuff obviously like that's not the not the best idea but we should be more responsible and prevent that from actually happening because that most likely that's what's going to happen. If it happens with, you know, one thing, it's probably going to continue to happen with more and more things. And the only way for us to prevent that, I think that if we are more responsible with the way that we do things and we call out some of the people who aren't, we could probably prevent the government from coming in and overreaching and cracking down on things that they probably shouldn't crack down on. If if I'm to be regarded as a reasonable, responsible, reticulated python keeper, do I have to worry that you at some point are going to decide, well, Kevin, I don't I don't want your reticulated pythons on the site. No, I, I have no plans on removing them from the platform. If I if I were to do that, I mean, the amount of people that would just be livid and, you know, I mean, it's just that'd be ridiculous. Like, you know, it's kind of confusing that so many people have said, oh, this is what's going to happen. Like, obviously, if I did that, it would be probably like the end of the platform because so many other people, you know, would look at it as, oh, you know, what's he going to do next? What's he going to take down next? And then like, oh, let's go do something else. Darren, you, you made a post essentially saying um, you, you banned Slytherin off the, off the platform permanently. If anyone does business with him afterwards, you know, or posts on his behalf, things like that, you will probably ban them or, you know, just take action. Kevin, let's say that you get approached by Samson and he says, hey, I have all these animals. I'm just going to get out of this. I need to, you know, I need you to take everything. I'm not going to do anything over that. You know, like I, I'm not saying you would. <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying like, you know, if, if you were another seller, if somebody did that, no, I'm not going to ban them over something like that. But if you are going to either sell the animals on his behalf so that he can continue doing what he's doing, or you are going to continue buying from him or working with him and continue to keep him 
in business doing things the way that he is, then that's the kind of stuff that needs to be, you know, just shut down. Like that's, that's where I decided to take it to kind of another level of, you know, over the years, people have talked, you know, people have shared some of this stuff. I saw some of this, you know, last year. I, I didn't know it to this extent, but now that I do, you know, I'm sitting here, I'm like, man, people could have spoken up about this two years ago or three years ago or last year or whatever. And, you know, we didn't. And and I know people know, you know, some people know what was going on, like how, you know, people who worked with him closely and all that. And the fact that people don't talk about it, that's where I see an issue. And I think that more people need to be outspoken about things that are unjust and, you know, just not right. That's why I decided to take it to that next level of like, hey, if you work with him, you're also done because I'm not going to deal with it. Like, I'm not going to put up with that crap. If we all boycott Slytherin, Samson Pruitt, do not buy, do not this, do not that. We're isolating Samson and Cassandra with this collection of animals where they won't have the means to take care of them. They won't have employees, won't be able to feed them. They won't be able to pay their power bill. And aren't we, if we just ostracize them, aren't we sending those animals to death. And I don't really necessarily have an opinion other than the fact that I care about these animals and I don't think these animals should be euthanized. You know, what is the right solution? I mean, obviously if there are, you know, let's say there are some animals that, you know, it's like, okay, this is really bad and we have to euthanize them. Maybe we have to, you know, I don't know. Uh, but if most of them don't have to be, then that's great. You know, that would be obviously a better solution what solution, you know, how to achieve that, I don't know. I'm not really sure how to go about that, I guess. A lot of people were wondering why we didn't make a video about it right away. Why did, we didn't jump on and hate on Samson. And it's because there's a lot of information I think that wasn't properly even talked about. I think a lot of the evidence was coming from uh, ex-employees that might've been disgruntled that were probably pretty complacent yeah. in the way that they were operating the whole time. Because I think if you're an employee and you've been dealing with something that for, for so long in such uh, neglect and you deal with it for two years and then you get upset with the guy and you start posting stuff, you're just as bad as him. So I think a lot of people weren't looking at exactly where a lot of this stuff was coming from. And they were just, I don't know, piling on. And also making videos about straight up animal neglect on YouTube, the video is not gonna necessarily go very far. You know what I mean? It's it's because it, it's, it's a very touchy subject. What does it take to be banned from Morph Market? What is the criteria? How do you decide that? Well, as I said, we've we've only banned right around 0.3% of sellers. So out of 5,000, we've banned around 15. Uh, again, as I said earlier, there's no personal vendetta or anything like that. It's literally just number of, you know, how, how many issues we're, we're having, you know, over the last six months, let's say, from each seller. If you were temporarily suspended, then you should probably look into what you're doing. You know, right. it, it's not just ratings, by the way. We, we get a lot of internal um, reviews and feedback and things like that, and messages. And we keep, you know, we keep track of all that. A lot of, well, you know, I, I would say well-known, but also just a lot of breeders in general. If you have a bad experience with somebody, it, it's not very, uh, not very smart for someone new into the hobby or into the industry to go and write a bad review on somebody because they're probably just going to get outed and they're never going to be able to be anything in the industry. A lot of people just reach out privately and they'll just... You know, they'll send us the information on the transaction and they'll say, hey, I had this issue. They didn't take care of it. You know, I just want you guys to know. And like, what do you guys recommend? And then we'll say, hey, reach out to them, see if they'll take care of it. And then sometimes they come back again and they're like, yeah, they still wouldn't take care of it. They wouldn't refund my money or they wouldn't do this or that. And so if, you know, if we get a lot of these internal issues and we have an abnormal or, or um, you know, kind of ex excessive amount then yeah, there's potential for that. But again, we're talking about 0.3% or 15 sellers out of over 5,000. 99.7% of the time, you are not going to get banned or even suspended or anything. Uh, so, you know, it's just, it's just not very likely to happen. Um, but yeah, it, it's gonna, there's definitely a lot to it. And there's a lot of different different things in play. Um, but, you know, really what I'm trying to do is, you know, I think we need to 
improve as an industry as a whole, um, not just online, but, you know, uh, it, at expos and pet stores and all that, like that's where at least 70% of animals are being sold, you know, annually in the US are at expos and pet stores. That is the front of the whole industry. And that's what everybody sees. That's what the public is seeing. They go to a pet store, they go to a reptile expo. They're not going online to Morph Market to go buy something. Um, you know, they're going to go look at it in person. And if they go to an expo or a pet store and they see, you know, unhealthy looking animals, animals all cramped up, you know, put together in some deli cup, you know, five or six of them at a time, and they just don't look good, you know, like whether it's, you know, something, you know, some unhealthy animal or something that, you know, was just freshly imported in and, you know, is sitting in a cup and it's just, you know, not really presentable to the general public. Um, you know, that's the kind of stuff that we need to change in order to have a better uh, public representation of ourselves. Bob Clark, he was banned, right? And I know he definitely I was has a. Ask that. Okay, well, there's a lot of people that are in his camp, and I feel like they might be very, you know, the loud minority of people stressing. But like Bob Clark, I know he's back on the website, but at one point, was he banned? Yes, Bob Clark's account was suspended for a couple days. Um, we had quite a few, uh, <laughs> a very excessive amount of, you know, feedback from a lot of different people, stuff being sent in, messages, all that. Yeah, we, uh, you know, started looking into all that. And um, I would say out of the majority of retic breeders, uh, there were a, a a small handful that had, you know, an excessive amount of complaints and things along those lines. So uh, we did, you know, we did suspend a couple accounts and look into some things. But, you know, ultimately, we decided to just leave it be and let it kind of be like, you know, a little bit of a, you know, nudge. I'm still working out the details on all this on, you know, how to go about all this long term. Uh, you know, I'm not going to say like, obviously, I'm human, we're all human, we all, you know, make mistakes and all that. But uh, there's been a number of sellers that we have had to permanently ban due to some very extreme, uh, you know, a couple of them convicted of animal abuse. And it's all public, you know, this is all public knowledge. Uh, and there were four that, you know, convicted of child abuse, yeah. you know, sexual abuse and things like yeah, that. Yeah. That stuff is like, okay, you know what? We don't need that. We have kids on this platform. We have kids going to expos and we need to make sure that these people are not, you know, on the platform. Basically, yeah, that's six out of the 15 right there. Yeah, we, we didn't ban Nerd. It was just for views. Uh, it was actually these guys' ideas. It's mine. So yeah. I, yeah. You're welcome, yeah. everybody. It's all your fault. You guys, uh, you guys lost, uh, lost some sales. It, it's probably doomed your whole business. I mean, I don't know. We'll see what happens. So if you're watching this video right now and you're just like already typing comments to Darian on Facebook, telling him he should go hang himself or something. I want you to not do that because Darian, we forced him to do this. We peer pressured him. So don't, don't be mean to him. All right. I got peer pressured into banning these guys and <laughs> Kevin got peer pressured into eating elephant. Shit. I think Darian has spelled out a lot. Uh, I'm really hoping this has uh, leveled things out. It's answered a lot of questions for me. I try to ask questions that were, you know, people have been relaying to me and they're worried. Obviously, I've been worried. We got this guy right here. He's telling us, you know, pretty much he seems very straightforward telling us what he, he intends to do and where it's at. So I'm hoping this answered a bunch of questions. But of course, we want to see your commentary and uh, have we resolved things for you or are you still pissed? I gotta turn my camera on, dude. You didn't turn your camera on!